So, morning guys, how we doing? <coughs> Another track got out this year called Finally, with the incredible vocals of Vern Lewis. Vernon Lewis, check him out online, incredible. So, the, what we're going to discuss today is, <laughs> I'm just going to show you guys as well. So, morning routines and how to nail your morning routine and nail your habits. So, here's a little look in my office. Obviously, we've got <laughs> Logan's things on the walls. Then, we've got my laptop, which I've worked on this morning. We've got my iPad. And we've also got my day planner, okay? So, these things don't just happen by chance. And... The biggest take home I will ever give any single one of you, if you're struggling a little bit, on how to improve is to start to plan, schedule, nail your morning routine and hold yourself accountable to it, okay? I'm going to tell you what mine is now. Mine is identical every single day, okay? That's why I'm here talking to you on a Sunday. Just turn that light off. It doesn't matter that it's a Sunday to me, okay? Sunday is just another day. It's another day to be a great dad. It's another day to be a great partner. It's another day to turn up for my clients. It's another day to work towards my goals. And the big thing to take home here is... these as well that's because I've worked so hard to create a life that I love from the depths of depression and suicide okay which is the opposite end of the spectrum isn't it okay so when you have a life that you don't love and you have a routine and a career and a relationship and no purpose and no goals that's why the weekend seems something different because it's your opportunity to escape, it's your opportunity to suppress, and it's your opportunity to sedate, okay? Very often we suppress from Monday to Friday and then sedate from Saturday to Sunday before suppressing again. Now, my biggest advice is we have to learn to create a life that we love. This means our relationships, this means our careers, this means the way we are as parents um, and our hobbies and our fun stuff, okay? Now, a big thing before I come on to the routine is a lot of people will say, and I'm actually going to do some, some seminars on this this year, especially for my clients, that it's their job that they hate, okay? It's generally two things that we hate that makes us really unhappy. It's either our job or our relationship, end of, okay? Uh, if we don't like both of them, they are the two biggest things in our life. So we will more than likely sedate and suppress and be destructive because we hate one of those two things and we're not dealing with it. Now, many of you will say when I go onto this morning routine, um, yeah, that's all right for you though, Lee, because you work for yourself. Oh, I can't do that because of X, Y, and Z. Well, you absolutely can because I didn't work for myself seven years ago, okay? I was in a job and a career that I hated that was destroying my life but I took action to make change. Now, um, Sarah, if she tunes in, um, we studied as a nurse this year as a part of things that were coached in the private client group. Um, Simon has left his job and qualified as an electrician. Um, Kate has moved away from, from her job and is now working online. And this has happened to a lot of people in our group. And I'm going to be doing some specific very, very specific trainings this year on in the private client group on how to find your purpose, how to find your desire, how to find your what it is that you love and how to sculpt that into a career that you can change because many of you will be using that as the reason why you're unhappy, okay? And especially guys, I get this all the time. Um, you work 18 hours because you're doing it for the kids. Not strictly true, to be honest with you. And you have to then ask, or again, there's some of you that are running your own businesses that are working 15, 16 hour days six to seven days a week. Now, the question that you have to ask yourself is, what's the payoff for that? Like, what am I getting back for that? And it might be, you know, oh, you really posh holiday every year where you post your highlights on Facebook or your car that you occasionally share on Facebook or, you know, your big house that you occasionally share on Facebook. But the way we need to change is, is, is that worth being unhappy for 
50 weeks of the year for five days, six days of every single week because we get these material things or we get these payoffs. And, and it's simply not. And I think that is something that you massively all need to drill down on, okay? Because the material things and the money and the lifestyle and the holidays do not outweigh being unhappy for the other 50 weeks of the year, okay? And also, very much, you know, like something moves, something actually, um, I guess made me do it now, sorry. Um, something actually moved me to tears this morning when I was on my morning walk. And it was about a guy and his dad. It's obviously a bit of a close subject for me. And the the dad had made a lot of changes in order to improve his life. Um, he'd started eating healthier, he'd started training, he'd started doing personal development, he'd started improving his life, he'd started treating his wife better, <clears throat> and he'd generally become a better person. And his son was very, very destructive and angry um, and drug taking and getting into fights and all those types of things. And he then began to copy what his dad was doing, okay? So his dad had been that person that was destructive and was eating and eating shit and drinking and taking drugs and gambling and going out with the lads and talking to his wife like shit and all those things. But then the dad was <clears throat> happy enough to have a opinion on the way his son was leading his life. And it's like, well, where do you think his son, where do you think your son got it from? You know, you, his son got it from him and he copies him. So when his dad began becoming a better person, and working on himself, his son actually began to follow and copy. And when his son then made the, all the same changes and started to progress in life, he actually said, uh, when his dad asked him, why have you done that? And he says, because I want to be like you, dad. And that's what got me. That's why it's getting me now. Um, because that's what I want Logan to say to me one day. Like, I want I want to be like you, Dad. Now, how hypocritical of it, of us, is it that some of us are just eating shit nonstop? We're not doing any personal development. We're, we're in careers that we hate. We argue all the time. We shout all the time. We're angry. We treat our wives or husbands like shit. Um, we don't show affection. We don't show love. And But then we expect our kids to be perfect. And then maybe pull them down or have a massive go at them if they're not. Well, if they're not, you know, hand on heart, I'll put, I'll put my hands up to this. I've done it in the past, but, you know, what if you're just a, a mardy fucking twat who eats shit, takes drugs, drinks, and speaks to your wife like shit, how do you think your son's going to grow up? He's going to grow up like you, like you. <laughs> Okay, and then you're probably going to have a go at him for his behaviour as he gets older. But he's grown up following you. So... Very often, I think the point that I'm trying to get to here is we're saying we're doing these things for our kids. Guys, typicals is spending 18 hours at the office, okay? Or 16 hours at the office or 14 hours at the office, hiding from a life that you have become unhappy with. Now, is that what's important to them? Um, those few extra pounds, that holiday they didn't really need, the football boots that they could have got, a pair for half the price or would you would you being at home for an extra four hours a day eating healthily going to the gym doing exercise taking your kids out um developing them teaching them showing them how to be the person that they need to be by leading as a fucking role model is that going to mean more to them than their two weeks in the Maldives because you're a fucking hero because you worked 18 hours every day doing a job you hate. That's what I want to leave you with. I know it's a difficult, I know it's a difficult um, subject that for some people because you will feel like you cannot leave your career or your job. I felt like that for, for, for many, many years. I just thought I was always going to be a club owner. I was always going to be a DJ. Um, I was always going to be a promoter and it was an impossible change. But it's proof that I did and it's proof that Sarah did and it's proof that Simon did and it's proof that a million people did. But 
What I want to drill down on you, you guys, if your career is making you unhappy, you will have an unhappy life. It doesn't matter how much you sugarcoat it with cars and holidays and all those things. It's what you spend the majority of your life doing. And you also spend the majority of your life with your partner. So if your relationship is crap and you hate your job, your life is going to be horrific okay and you will suppress and sedate it's as simple as that so you know don't write yourself off but drill down on okay what career do I want how do I want my life to look how do I want to behave as a partner you know if our relationship really is that fucked is it time to leave okay is it time for us to have that conversation rather than suppressing it again suppressing um so yeah daily routine that's what it comes down to and this is where this came from so I haven't changed this in in years, okay? And I've added to it though. Now it always, always, always starts with a walk every single day. Now I'll also tell you another little story. Um, and I bl- <laughs> it's so crazy what you can blame for this. Me and Nat had this conversation yesterday. We went through an absolute batshit crazy period about three months ago before I hit a massive low. Okay, uh, I haven't hit one for a long time, so it was a bit of a shock to both of us, um, but we battled through it. And the crazy thing is, I blame Sons of Anarchy, which might seem really, really strange. Okay, me and Nat both really got into Sons of Anarchy, and it was kind of when we went into that second lockdown and direction was lost a little bit, routine was flipped again, uh, gyms closed again, and we just started staying up until like half 11, 12, sometimes one o'clock at night. Then I was getting up later, I wasn't getting up at half five, I was getting up at half seven. Then I was stressed in the morning, um, I stopped journaling, I stopped um, doing my walks, I stopped walking Frankie, I was a shit dog parent. Um, and the whole morning routine just went to rat shit. I stopped doing any personal development. I just got up at half seven, had some breakfast, straight in the office to work, okay? And that culminated in a, a massive meltdown, which then led to me getting a new coach, which is Paul, who I'm now working with. Now, now that morning routine's back, at the risk of sounding egotistical, I'm on fire every day. Look how fresh face I am. I haven't drank for 60 five days, I think now. Uh, I'm making sure I eat properly. I'm making sure I'm eating all my veggies, all my, like I posted yesterday, I'm gonna go in the the private client group afterwards and tell them about food. But you know, I've got no bags under my eyes, well, little ones with us with age. Um, My skin's fresh, uh, I'm fitter, I'm healthier, I'm stronger, and every area of my life has upscaled. And you as clients and people on here will have noticed this. I'm here every single morning at eight o'clock for your, you guys, and I will be for the next 365 days. I'm sending an email every day for the next 365 days. You know, I've set goals uh, and I've made myself accountable. So this is mine. Okay, 5 a.m. every day. It's non-negotiable, okay? I do not recommend, if you are currently getting up at six, seven, eight, that you go straight to that, especially if you're not getting getting up at eight o'clock, but build up to it, go back half an hour every couple of days, okay? So I get up and I have a full bottle of water, okay? I also have a coffee, because I love coffee, and it wakes me up. I stretch and then I journal. What's important to me for that day is what are my tasks, what do I need to do, Um, how am I gonna treat that, how am I gonna treat Logan, how am I gonna treat myself, what are my most important tasks? And I create my, I've just started using this new one from Paul, um, but I create my absolute tasks of everything that I need to do throughout the day. What's important to me, what my goals are, what my objectives are, um, and work from there. I then go straight out for my walk with Frankie, um, 10,000 steps minimum, and personal development and study. Now, when I wrote this, it was 10,000 steps. I've actually pulled it back a little bit to to 6,000, which I did today, because it was starting to be a bit long. That will generally change dependent on how I'm feeling, because at the moment, I don't know what your house is like, but we've got snow. So it was impossible for me to do that many steps this morning. It would have taken me two to three hours probably, okay? Um, So I actually did 6,000, but I did my personal development whilst I'm walking. So there, this this is for the no time crew as well. Personal development, 60 minutes, steps, exercise, and walk the dog. All three were combined into one hour, okay? Then, my next thing when I get back is my appreciation to Nat, Logan, and one other person. So I get home from the walk, um, I go and wake them up. Um, 
they get a kiss, they get a hug, um, I tell them something nice and I also send a nice message to some other person in my life which I fluctuate and it changes, okay? I then personally use the Wim Hof method um, to get my breathing under control, jump in the shower and have a cold shower um, and then I'm here turning up for my live at 8am every single day. Now this is work but for me it's not work because I love coaching you guys, I love helping you and I love my job because I've created a life that I don't need to escape from. Trust me, four years ago, um, I'd have still been sat in the kitchen right now with a load of dead end mates partying, okay? Um, and then my other morning routine is in the week, I train. So once I've done this live, uh, once I've checked in with my clients, I go straight to the gym and train. That's just personal to me and I can do that because I'm self-employed. And the reason is because when you are self-employed, more things can come up throughout the day. Um, I might have something urgent or important to deal with. Um, so yeah, that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, that whole routine takes three and a half, four hours. But when you get up at 5 a.m., it's all done by half eight, okay? And look how much I've done in that period. Now that would be the point. Most people could still do all that and go to work if you had a job, okay? So... Don't say you don't have time or, or make excuses. You can do it. It's just creating it and making, excuse me, making it routine until it just becomes what you do. But trust me, hand on heart, it is the most important thing you will ever have in your life. And that is a massive alarm clock that what happened to me earlier in the year, okay? Just slipped into something I've not become aware of. I've lost my thoughts, um, got into a stupid box set, which is way too long, seven series. And I'm not saying don't watch TV. I will still watch box sets, but I need to get a handle on it. And I need to make sure what time I go to bed because otherwise I become overtired and my morning routine will go to shit. So that's it for this morning. Uh, massive love to all of you. Have an awesome Sunday and... Tomorrow morning, I will be going through the evening routine and how you can also nail that and how the evening routine is what completely sets you up for the morning routine. Hope this has been helpful, guys. As always, if you can drop a comment, a like and a share, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, just put thanks, Lee, helpful, whatever, comment, anything comment at all really, really helps um, so that Facebook don't charge me loads of money for advertising. Um, and... It also might help someone else today, mightn't it? Just just seeing this might be that small little knee jerk that someone else needs to take action. And that's what I get for up for every day. That's what I hope to do. That's why I do these videos, because I want to help people. I want to have an impact on people's lives. And I want to help all of you try and implement little things in your life that make you feel healthier and happier. Okay, have an awesome day, guys. Massive love. And I will see you all again at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning.